they're handing out that little blank sheet of paper that I hope that you can use if you have a pencil or a pen. Uh, we'll be taking a little uh, answer some questions of really a kind of great for yourself. But let me just say that it's been such a privilege and an honor to be back here. Amen. Not only in Korea, but here in, in Kunsan at the Haven. And God has given some very special things. And, uh, and one of them, of course, is Brother Ted Clark. And I, I know he may be a little embarrassed at that, but uh, only God can do things like that. And, uh, and, uh, and of course, it's just, just to see not only those that I know, and was a blessing to me while we were here for so many years. Uh, and uh, of course, then the new ones that I've met, some of you have been very gracious to me. You've taken me out and fed me. You've given me money. And, and I, I'm just grateful. My heart is grateful for the blessing that you have bestowed upon me. And I'm so grateful. I give God the glory, first of all, of course. But I want to thank my Lord for you and for what you've done. Brother Jim and Sue have been gracious in a wonderful way and uh, just uh, just really uh, treat me like a king and uh, <clears throat> but I tell you it's a, it's a joy to be back with you amen so with that I shall get started you ready yeah give unto the Lord glory to his name worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness oh come let us sing unto the Lord let us make a joyful noise unto the rock of our salvation let us come before His presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise unto Him with psalms. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our God. Rejoice in the Lord, ye righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of His holiness. Exalt ye the Lord our God, and worship at His footstool. For the Lord our God is holy. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at His holy hill, for the Lord our God is holy. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless His holy name. If you're here today and you name the name of Christ, say Amen. 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 All right, take your, take your Bibles and turn to 1 Samuel chapter 30. Old Testament, 1 Samuel chapter 30. We're going to be reading verses 1 through 6. But before I read the infallible and Eric word of God, I want you to stand with me, please. Everyone standing, every head bowed, every eye closed, knowing that there's no one here today by mistake, it's by divine appointment. And I want you to pray with me and pray for me. And as I pray aloud, you pray silently because no one's here by mistake. We want the Lord Jesus Christ to be glorified and the Spirit of God to have the liberty through these words today to speak to our hearts. So let's pray. Father, I thank you for this wonderful Lord's Day. I thank you for the privilege once again of standing in this pulpit and proclaiming your eternal word. Now, Father, thou knowest everyone that's here. You know the burdens we carry. You know the heavinesses of our hearts. You know everything about us, for there is no secrets with thee. And so, Lord, as we come today and set once again under the precious Word of God, I pray by Thy Holy Spirit, dealing with our hearts, that we will respond in faith, believing. Now, Father, whatever the need may be, O oh God, knowing that today it can be met. And so, Lord, have we come asking of Thee that You would anoint Your Word afresh. Yes. And, Lord, that your, your name will be honored and glorified in this place. That when we leave here today, we truly leave here rejoicing, saying how good it's been to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Oh, Father, minister to us now from your word. We ask in Jesus' precious and lovely name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verses 1 through 6. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Zechlag uh, on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south, and Ziklag, and smitten Ziklag, and burned it with fire, and had taken the women captives, and they were therein. They slew no, not, not any, either great or small, but carried them away, and sent, went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no power to weep. 
And David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinam the Jezreelite's lightest, and Abigail the wife of Nabal the Camelite. And David was greatly distressed for the people's sake, for the people's fate of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. Question, how well do you know yourself? How well do you know yourself? What have you learned about yourself? Are you listening to my questions? Are you thinking? No one knows you better outside of God than yourself. One of the greatest teachers of life that God has given is life itself. Some people can't deal with the lessons of life. But they're there for our learning. They're there for our maturity. So what have, has life taught you so far about yourself? Now I've given you a piece of paper. If you've got a pen, a pencil, you can partake. If not, don't worry about it. Just think of it in your mind. But I've got some questions to give you. I want you to answer uh, on that piece of paper from zero to ten. Okay, from zero, zero to ten. Bad. Huh? Zero is the best. Zero is the best. Zero is the best. And ten is the worst. <laughs> I was fixing to give that. That's important. Yes, I know. Uh, so I want you to rate yourself. Zero being the best and, and ten being the worst. Okay, here's the question. How would you rate, from 0 to 10, your pain level? Some people can take pain, some people can't. So what's your pain level? Second, what is your emotional level? How would you rate you, your emotional level? And third, how would you rate your stress level? Your stress level. <clears throat> okay, so have you answered? The best that you know. So my question now is, what did you base your answer on? What did you base your answer on? Okay, very simple on what you have experienced in your life so far. The only thing you can base those answers on is how you have learned yourself thus far in dealing with issues in life. Okay? And so, you know what I have found? I have found that my pain level, my emotional level, my stress level will differ from time to time based upon circumstances. All right? Uh, the more the situation is not under my control or my understanding, the higher the level. What stresses me is the loss of things. I mean, if I lose my wallet, I get stressed out. <laughs> I lose my keys, I get stressed out. You know? Uh, and there's certain things. The other day, not too long ago, I, I, I here's what here's how I leave the house. All right, I no longer have my my wife to to say, Bill, do you have this and this and this? So here's how I leave my house. When I prepare, I try to get into the habit of going. <laughs> and because I'm feeling my wallet, I'm feeling my keys, I'm feeling my phone, that kind of thing. All right. But I was in a hurry, and I was late for church or something. I think it was church. I think yeah, it was a Sunday morning, and we meet meet for prayer meeting at 8:30. And so I went out and shut the door and locked it. Guess what? I didn't have my keys. The key to my house is also the key to my car. I stressed. How in the world am I going to get back in? 
There was no way that I could break the door. But thank the Lord I have glass in my front door. And so I guess what I had to do? I had to break out one of the glasses, one of the windows. Not only that, but after I broke it out and cleaned it where I could put my arm through, make sure it was, I didn't get cut, then I had to try to reach the lock on the door, and I couldn't get it. <coughs> Just enough for my fingers to, not to have. So what did I do? I broke another window. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was the closest one. Amen. Amen. I prayed. Amen. Amen. I did. I was praying all the time, but I, I was kind of stressing out, you see. And so I had to take my arm out, and I had to say, Lord, and I, 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 I'm, I'm nervous with him because I, I, I got to be where I got to be, and I'm, ah. So, I prayed, and I said, Lord, calm the spirit, but most of all, please, get a hold of my arm and stretch it. <laughs> well, what I had to do was get on my tiptoes and kind of get as much of the glass of the, the, the window, the bottom of the window here where I could get. And, uh, and praise God, he answered. And I got in, I got my keys, and all five went. <coughs> Stress. Amen. Um, long time ago, it was uh, 79. My family and I were living in Incheon area, and we were scheduled to go to a, a pottery factory where the, the pastor friend of ours, his brother was a Korean human treasure of pottery. So he had invited us to come to his place. And me and my wife and my small children, it was just, you know, it was going to be a wonderful outing. And so we get on the subway to head towards Seoul. And from Incheon, there was only, only, only two, two lines in that day. And, uh, and so we were getting on, and my wife had her bag, uh, a big bag that had her purse in it and, and our lunch and, and all those kind of things, and she had it on her shoulder. And so when the subway came, the subway door opened, we got on, and we were finding a seat, and all of a sudden someone handed my wife a, a bag, the, a bag of uh, our, our lunch bag. Where did that come from? While we were standing in line waiting for the subway, someone slit very professionally, <laughs> slit the bottom of the bag, and everything fell out without us knowing. Mm. And of course, our, 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 our passports, uh, keys to our apartment, uh, our money, everything was there, you know, except I had my own keys. These were my wife's keys to our apartment. And so we've been robbed. And so what we do, we, I mean, uh, it, it, it was stressful, okay? And, of course, my kid didn't know what was going on. And uh, so we got off the next subway station, and uh, uh, Pastor Park, he, he, he went to the subway station down the line, and I went back to the subway station where we came from and one before. Because usually they would, thieves would, would, would get what they want and throw the rest in a garbage can or usually in a, in a post office box. Okay, and so we did that. Then I thought, well, you know, I've got, I didn't find anything, nobody found anything. And so I, I knew that there were keys to apartments, so I told my wife, I said, I'm going back to the apartment. And I said, just in case that we've been, been you know, they, they knew who they were hitting and they wanted, they were going away from our apartment. Mm -hmm. So I went back to the apartment. And then, so of course, as I walked in, and I just began to sit down. I went into my children's room with the, 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 the old Korean uh, gilts that they slept on. And, uh, and so I sat in there, and I was feeling the stress and the nervousness. And I said, Lord, I said, i got to give this to you. And I said, if it be to your pleasure, you have sent it for a purpose. And that's always important when you start praying. Acknowledge that God is much bigger. All right? Acknowledge there's always a reason why, because you are His child. If you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you are the child of God, and there is a hedge about you. And you can pray thus. And so I committed to the Lord, and I felt my spirit getting, getting easy, eased. And, and so I just yielded to the Him. 
And so when my wife came home, we had, of course, contact the, the embassy and let them know that the United States Embassy, that our passports had been stolen. And uh, they said, well, you need to report it to the local police department. And so uh, I was on my way, going from my apartment to go to the police department. And as I walked out my door and started out the gate, the mailman on a motorcycle came through and he hollered, Alabama. <laughs> and I stopped and I said, Alabama. <laughs> and he gave us all that was in my wife's pocketbook except for the money. Amen. The passports were there, the credit cards were there, the keys were there. Woo! It was good. You know? I got excited. Whoever did it dropped it, dropped all the, except for the money, in a, in a, in a mailbox. And the mailman found it, took it to the police department. And the police department uh, uh, was trying to make all this out. And a couple of Mormon, Mormon missionaries walked by and they called them in. And they found Dr. Johnson's uh, in Seoul. He found his, his name and address and phone number and they called. And, and he gave them the information where we lived. And, and, they, and so the mailman brought it right to our house. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Now listen. Stress itself is a natural reaction that comes upon us as humans. Therefore, stress is not a bad thing, but a natural thing. But any distress solution that comes into our lives that is not aided by a hope that's real and secure, a strength especially in God, can lead to depression, which is the loss of hope. And in reality, as you grow in grace, it's, it's a sin for a Christian to be Not distressed. It's a natural reaction. But when we don't have no hope, that distress can add, add, come to a depression. Depression is simply having no hope. Having no hope. So, it is important that we let God create, and this is the title of my message today, a spiritual first aid kit. <coughs> having a spiritual first aid kit that God alone can help you have and make as you face life that will aid you in distressing times that will keep you from depression. Now let's look at verse 6. Verse 6 of 1 Samuel chapter 30. It says, And David was greatly distressed. Now why? They were all under the same, you heard me read the scriptures, you, you read it with me. They were all under the same distress. But the situation became greater with David when, these, when his men let their distress lead to depression. They were losing all hope. And that brought distress to David's heart. So what did David do? Did David throw back the blame? No. Did he run? No. It says that David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Amen. He encouraged himself in the Lord his God. David experienced enough in his life and with himself and with his Lord to be reminded that the realization of God's presence will overshadow any situation. And besides my stories that I gave you today being a story of disaster that you want to forget about, they bring tremendous memories. Do you realize that everything that happens to you as a Christian, God has a reason for it? And it's to make a good memory 
with him overshadowing your situation or it will be a sin that you're going to have to confess. Sorry, I'm, Lord, I'm sorry I didn't trust you. I'm sorry I didn't pray and ask for your guidance. Prayer is a wonderful thing for the child of God. It's communion with God. To know his, his mind, to know his heart, to have his hand to guide and direct. When we trust in God, we're looking to his presence to overshadow the situation. So keeping that in mind will always lead to having the right response in your situation. I use this verse in our Bible conference, Psalm 23, verse 4, but it's good here. Although he says, yea I, though, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. Now let's, let's, let's get this. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, do you realize that's the journey that every one of us is on? Because of the reality of the shadow of death that overshadows us in time as humans, we don't know what's around the next corner. We don't know what's going to happen to us when we leave here and walk downstairs. We don't. We don't know about the law. But when we have the realizations of God's presence there to guide us, to protect us, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because of the realization of His presence with me. Thou art with me. And the presence of God will overshadow any situation you're going through. Somebody may be here today and you're very heavy in your heart. But may I point you to the presence of the Lord that can overshadow that experiencing that you're having right now in your journey in the valley of the shadow of death. Turn to Psalm 31. Psalm 31. In Psalm 31, verse 13 and 14. Listen to the Word of God. It says, For I have heard the slander of many, Fear was on every side. While they took counsel together against me, they devised the, to take away my life. That's a distressful situation. But listen to the presence of the Lord in the heart of the psalmist. The situation was real. Verse 14, he said, But, but I trusted in the Lord. I trusted in thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my God. Yeah. Uh, many of you were not here for the <coughs> fellowship meeting when I pre preached the message, but, but God, but God. God is, I'm sorry. God is. And making, pre uh, making personal applications in your spiritual growth to the God is, to the God is mine. It's a wonderful I know that God is God. <clears throat> but in a, any situation I can say, but God is my God, He's much bigger than what I can see or know. Right. And trust Him. Do you realize that, that God is the same? His almighty powers are the same. Oh, we don't see miracles like the Bible says in the old time. Oh, yes, we can. He had not changed. Your problem is you don't believe. Do you realize the key to the miraculous powers of God is your faith and trust in Him? Yeah. We limit God by our unbelief. There's a lot of good verses on that. Yea, they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. I like uh, Psalm, Psalm 81. I think it's verse 13 and 14. Oh, that my people had hearkened to me, and Israel had walked in my ways. I would have soon subdued their enemies and turn my hand against their adversaries. But they didn't. And so the adversaries overcame them. Simply to trust in the Lord. So he said, but I trusted in thee, O Lord. I said, 
I said, Thou art my God. Not words of magic, words of truth. Mm -hmm. Amen. David was distressed, but not depressed. He encouraged himself in the Lord. The word encouraged here is the word strengthened. To be strong in him who is strength. Let me ask you, have you learned so far in life that you are very weak? Matter of fact, the Bible points out that man is the epitome of weakness. And it's only in that weakness, acknowledged before God and strength, that you will know his strength. It's a wonderful truth. A wonderful, wonderful truth. Alright? So, David... From his spiritual first aid kit, <clears throat> at a moment of time when he needed the Lord, <clears throat> I begin to imagine. What did he draw from to encourage his heart? What kind of thoughts came to him when he was encouraged in the Lord? I think it was more than just, well, you know, Lord, when I was a boy, I was a shepherd boy, and that 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 bear come upon and that lion came upon, and I went and slew him. And you remember when I faced Goliath, I slew him to them. That wasn't David's attitude, by the way. That's right. David's attitude when he faced Goliath was in the, in the very face of Goliath. He says, today the Lord has delivered you into my hand. His confidence was in God. But I think there was more. I think personally there was, was truth that David had come to know. At that moment, he could reach down in his, spirit, in his spiritual first aid kit and pull out a verse like Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of good courage? Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Whoa! <clears throat> the Word of God, remember in our comfort, the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any to it. So, it takes care of things. David in his spiritual first aid kit was pulling out scripture, pulling out truths, pulling out that which he could rely on. His confidence was true in the Word of God. When my wife and I was told that she had stage 4 of ovarian cancer, in the distress of the moment, it is true, I'll never forget it. We're sitting there at the table with the doctor and he's telling us all that the test is and all that has come up. And as I have my wife's hand, and immediately when he says stage four, cancer. At that time they didn't know exactly what cancer. I felt the grip of her hand. And immediately, this is true. Immediately God gave me from my spiritual first aid kit, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. There's many more he could have gave me, but he gave me that one, and I looked at it. And I said, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Though those was a the feeling of distress there, there was not agony of soul. There was not a horror of spirit. And we left there knowing that her is God's child and God's servant, that God had a reason and a purpose. And we would only know it if we were to trust Him. Many disasters have happened to people and they never knew the reason. One of the great blessings of things that happens in your life is when you can trust God and He shows you in time the reason. And it's for His glory. We were encouraged in our Lord that day. And then when my wife died, one of the first things that God gave me out of my spiritual first aid kit was 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 
verse 9 and 10. Amen. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, would I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in distress, in, 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 my, in my infirmities, in my reproaches, in my necessities, in my persecutions, in distress for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, then am I strong. And I stand before you today, not as a strong man, I stand before you today knowing that in God's grace, He gave me strength. And for some of you that came from Korea to be with, with me and my wife's funeral, know that. Was it not a glorious service? It was. It lasted for an hour and a half. I was able to preach. And my children was able to sing. And they were able to give testimonies. And it was good. Why? Because it was in God's strength. We were glorifying Him for a life lived. A very unselfish life. A very virtuous life. Did we understand it? No. But you know what? i got to share this with you. When I got through, and the funeral director says, you may come down and view your wife before we close the casket. Because I had it open. And, and I'd already made up my mind that there were some people that had come that was not able to view her yet because the night before it was just went on over two hours and they still, some people didn't get to view her. And so I stepped down out of the pulpit, down off, and I turned and I looked at my dear wife's body in a casket. And when I looked at her, she had a smile on her face. No one else saw it, but I saw it. It was a smile, as if to say, all is well. Praise to the Lord. God gave that for me. I turned around and I said to the people, those who have not viewed uh, my dear wife, can come at this time, they begin to come, and I turned back around, and the smile was gone. It was there for me. Only God can do things like that. And I rejoiced in what God had done. And it has been wonderful. You know, it has been. And I can only know this. Listen to what it says once again. How I was encouraged. Why? Because it became mine. As Christ said to Paul, he said to me. He said to me. You see, the Word of God will speak to you. It's His Word. Yes, He used holy men of God to write it, but it's His Word. It's eternally settled, as we heard in Sunday school this morning. And so as He said to Paul, He said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. Not was, not shall be, but is. That is a continued presence. It's a present tense. God is. It speaks of what? His eternity is. Think about it. God's grace is sufficient for me today. Guess what? Tomorrow is fresh. For me to have it, it is. It will always be is. Not has been, not will be, but is. And it goes wherever you go. God's grace is sufficient. Thus I rejoice in my yesterdays and I can be excited about my tomorrows. Why? Because my Lord is. He is. You know what else I found in my spiritual first aid kit? God has given me songs. Songs. Not only because I enjoy singing, but songs is something that is very, very wonderful ability for man to do. Even if you can't carry a tune, you can hum, but you have a song in your heart. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Remember the verses I gave? Let us make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Even if it's a, uh, but it's a noise within your soul to God, He receives it. 
he receives it as a joyful sound, a sweet savor before him. Songs like Rejoice in the Lord, He Makes No Mistakes. Oh, what a wonderful song. Songs like New Grace that I sung for you last Sunday. Huh? Yeah. You know how excited it is? I've got God's grace on me today, and I know it. But the excitement is that tomorrow His grace is there. It's going to be as, as fresh as the dew of the morning. It's unfathomable. It's there. It's always there. The marvelousness of God's grace upon my life. Songs like In the Valley, He Restored My Soul. <clears throat> this song has become very special. Matter of fact, I'd like to sing it for you. Can I sing it for you? Amen. Here, here's how it goes. When I go in spirit, I cry, Lord, lift me up. I want to go higher with thee. But the Lord knows I can't live on a mountain. So he picked out a valley for me. He leads me beside still waters. Somewhere in the valley below, he draws me aside to be tested and tried. But in the valley, he restoreth my soul when it's dark as a dungeon and the sun seldom shines and i question lord why must this be but he tells me there's strength in my sorrows and there's victory in trials for me I still waters somewhere in the valley below. He draws me aside to be tested and tried. But in the valley, he restoreth my soul. Yes, in the valley. He restoreth my soul. He gives songs. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah. He gives songs. It may be a poem. Something that just is yours. And he puts it in that first aid kit. Your first aid kit. It may be a memory. It may be a situation that God has shown himself. In a wonderful way that in that moment of need, you're reminded of what God was and what God still is. Mm -hmm. It could be a person. Someone whose testimony means something to you. At that moment, he, he recalled. He recalled their testimony. A word of wisdom. It may be a friend that you could call. A friend that you could always talk to. Someone who always prays for you. Are you letting God build you a spiritual first aid kit for your life? But there's no greater antidote in that kit than the Word of God. It could even be verses of prayer. You know, verses can pray. God's Word can pray. I, I, many times as I memorize a reading of Scripture, I said, that's a tremendous prayer request. And I'll bow my head and say, Lord, this speaks to me. I won't. I make this my request. Huh? Yeah. Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ made a request for us? To us? Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Matthew chapter 9, verse 38. Pray ye. Jesus Christ says to us, I want you to remember this request of mine. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth labors into his harvest. If you look around you, I wish, I wish 
I wish there was a time that we could all of the haven of all the years. Two years from now will be the 50th anniversary. Amen. All right? Amen. And can you imagine if we all, the, all the, the folks that God has reached of those 50 years here in Kroonsong could all be together? One day we will. But what a meeting we would have. What a joy there would be. What an encouragement would be. But many have gone. But praise God, one day we're all going to be together again. Amen. Amen. I was blessed yesterday as I was taken to lunch by Dr. Lee. He was my doctor all my years here in Kunsan. He was a medical doctor in the Korean Army in Vietnam. And he just loves missionaries. And he, the first day I went to him, first day I went to him, he met me, he listened to who I was, and he never, never charged me a penny. Not for me, my wife, and my children. And we'd go to him at any time. And when he saw me, he went like this. And with tears in his eyes, he came to me to hug me. He was a friend. Listen to me now. Friends are very important. But when you've got something to really share, more than just a simple friendship, but a heart, a love, a care, you become a part of the spiritual first aid kit for your life. There are others here today that I could name that's very much a part of my spiritual first aid kit. So how's the building of your first aid kit? How's it coming? Maybe today you want to be consciously aware. Lord, I want to be conscious of you building me a spiritual first aid kit. And you know how you get started? Your favorite Bible verse. Verse that can come to you at any time. <laughs> and start building it. Start listening to the songs that are sung and, and let the message of that song minister to you where it becomes your song. Find yourself singing. Find yourself humming. Find yourself thinking on heavenly things. And as you do, you can become very sensitive to situations that occurs in your life which the Holy Spirit reached down in your first aid kit and pull it up. Just the thing that you needed for that moment. Are you willing to do so? Are you willing to ask God, Lord, I, I, I want to build. I want you to give me a spiritual first aid kit that I can draw from at any time. Did you do that? Father, I thank you so much for the joy of this day. And Lord, those thoughts that have come that could bring sadness, it could bring sorrow, no. No. He that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it is sin. Oh, Father, when we know it's right and good to trust you, then we are to trust you. And so, Lord, to believe that we might know the miraculous, that we might see your glory and your power as you have revealed it unto us. So, Father, I pray today that you would take this simple message of the spiritual first aid kit for our lives, your word, the songs, whether it's a poem, whether it's a prayer, whether it's a friend, Wherever it's the same that has just stuck with us, it's, it's gone into our kit. And at any time by your Spirit can draw it out. At any time. And it's wonderful. And so, Lord, we ask that you would work a work as only you can now in our hearts. Bless the invitation as it's given. May, our, may we come with simple truth, simplicity of faith, and the simplicities of Christ, therefore to know the depths and the profoundness of it. And we'll thank you and we'll praise you for what you're going to do. Lord, 
I want to thank you once again for the joy that's been mine of standing here at the haven once again and preaching. And I pray, God, if it be to your pleasure that I and my children can come and be back here in 2021 on the 50th anniversary and once again to give you praise and glory for what thou hast done. Now, Lord, just bless as you continue to work as only you can. And we'll thank you and we'll praise you. We ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Amen.